Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Now, the live first hour of the radio program. This is Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, author of A Savage Life, Michael Savage. The USA in your Chevrolet. America is asking you to call. Drive your Chevrolet. All right, thanks very much. That was the 50s. America. That's when America was an America that I loved. That was an America that I understood. That was before all of the communities that have been created by the Alinskys of America. It started with God knows which community, but we have so many communities. We have the LGBT community, we have the gay community, the black community, the Latino community, the Asian community, the Native American community, the Pacific Islander community, the Indian community, the Muslim community, the millennial community, the elderly community, the homeless communities. We have the addiction community, the disabled community, the migrant community, the atheist community, the poor community, the physically challenged community, the mentally challenged community. Uh, the woman community, we have the high challenge community, the bald community, the short community, the tall community, the bearded community. In other words, in the new, new America created by the communists, we have a fractured America which has been divided to make it easier to be conquered. Now, I have an admission to make today on today's radio show that you may find shocking, but I'm going to make this admission. I've been holding it back for a long time, and... Uh, I think we all have to let it all hang out and admit who we really are. So on July 3rd, 2019, Michael Savage has an admission to make. I am a community organizer of the Patriot community. So welcome to the Patriot community, because that's all who listens to this show. The people who uh, sound like uh, occasional cortex don't belong in this community. They go back where they came from. Uh, the communists don't belong in this community. I want to say something really positive here. Being, I'm going to read a quote from the Navy SEALs Fund spokesperson, Rachel Zirion, Zirion, D Z I E R A, Navy SEALs Fund. I'm quoting her now. Being on the Savage Nation helped start the momentum for Eddie's case, especially getting his wife Andrea's voice heard. Thank you, Navy SEALs Fund. Thank you, Navy SEALs Fund. Eddie Gallagher, as you know, has been found innocent because he always was. Uh, as you well know, the military has been penetrated by malevolent drones. I didn't know that they had infiltrated even elite communities such as the Navy SEALs, but I believe now after this trial, there is clear evidence that after Obama, who himself was a malevolent drone of those who hate this country and everything it stands for, mainly the Islamist community, the malevolent drones have infiltrated the Navy SEALs, and they've infiltrated all branches of the government and military after Obama. Now, what do I mean by malevolent drones? They look like us. They sound like us. They talk like us. But they're malevolent. They're not like us. They're not patriots. And the malevolent drones, as you could see with the Gallagher case, as you can see what they did to uh, the Supreme Court justice, you can see who the malevolent drones are. Do you know who I'm talking about? Remember they accused him of gang rape? You remember who did it? Diane Feinstein? Kamala Harris is a malevolent drone. They're all the same. And what do they use? What are the tactics of the malevolent drones after they infiltrate government or military? They use slander and lies and deceit to conquer their enemies. Now you can see this most clearly today with the girl from New York. The uh, 
the the idiot. I mean, she is really stupid because she has stepped on so many toes now. It's inevitable that the party itself is going to punish her some way. I'm surprised, incidentally, that occasional cortex has not been has not been taken to task by Pelosi, who is a power mad woman. And something I know about power madness is that it corrupts. How she lets this lunatic make statements that are laughable. How you let a um, a person such as her infiltrate your own party where the whole country can finally see with their own eyes what a deceitful liar this girl is and how it will affect them in any election after this I do not I do not know what Pelosi is doing and what she thinks but I do know this we can see with the malevolent drone occasional cortex as an example what I mean by using slander and lies and deceit to conquer she goes down to the border and she says they're drinking toilet water that's because she knows either she knew she was lying well, she's too dumb to understand that the sink that was being used in those detention facilities was a combo spigot for water and a toilet. That's how you save on plumbing, number one, in jails, and number two, it prevents the prisoners from taking apart the sink and using the parts to make shivs. That's something you would think occasional cortex would have known, but she didn't. Or did she? Well, she's a malevolent drone, is what I'm saying, and those who accused the Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher of killing someone on the battlefield is an example of how far the malevolent drones have come having infiltrated even the Navy SEALs I spoke to a fellow who knows from the inside what happened here and he said to me these are holdovers the officer class that did this to uh, Gallagher uh, were put there by Obama remember I told you we had to purge the military of all the people from captain and above who had been appointed under Obama. Do you remember I wrote that two books ago? I mean, who do you think you're talking to here? What do you think, I'm just shooting hot, hot, hot air off here? Two of my books ago, I wrote to you that after Obama leaves, whoever becomes president, if we win, if we should win, he is going to have to go through the entire military command structure and demote or dismiss everyone, captain and above, who had been appointed under Obama. Every last one of them is a malevolent drone and every one of them is activated right now, undermining the United States government through the United States military. And I stand by those words. There should be an investigation of the investigators who did this to Eddie Gallagher. Particularly that prosecutor. Who is he? He puts on the dress uniform that looks like Eddie Gallagher, the Navy SEAL hero. But he's nothing but a scummy lawyer. A filthy lawyer in drag. He likes to put on the drag of a Navy SEAL. You remember when Mrs. Gallagher was on this show? And she almost cried on this show. What a tough, beautiful woman she is. And she said, yes, the prosecutor who lied about my husband gets to wear the very same dress uniform that Eddie wears in the courtroom. Can you believe this? He plays at being a hero, but he's far from a hero. He's an enemy within. And there must be consequences to this behavior, whether it is in Congress or the military. Remember, we own the presidency. He's our president now. Just listen to what I just said. He's our president now. The Senate is our Senate now. The House is filled with left-wing, lying, deceitful people, 90% of whom are communists. We, we know that. Do I have to name names? No, I won't name the names. We need a new UAC, a House of Un-American Activities Committee. Uh, the likelihood of that happening is very low because the House is run by fanatical left-wingers. They would never create such a committee. But getting back to the issue of today, the fractured America divided in order to be conquered, and uh, the fact that the largest number of listeners to this program, probably most talk radio, which is conservative, I would say uh, represents the patriot community. Would you say that's accurate? I would. Now, the word patriot itself is almost controversial in America today because of the vermin on the left. Because of the vermin who run the media, they've made you embarrassed if you put a flag in front of your house or if you call yourself a patriot. They made you somewhat suspect. But if you're from Mexico and you go to a boxing match and you fly the Mexican flag, that's a good flag to the vermin who run the media. They have nothing to say. But put an American flag outside your condominium and your condo board of condo commies or Bolshe Bolshevik corned beef eaters, eaters will call you a Nazi for flying the American flag outside your house. This is all wrong. This is a nation upside down right now. And there is a way to write it. I'm not going to sit here and whine and complain like Rush Limbaugh. You know, listen to him. He sounds like he's whiny and crying all day long. What's with him? 
voice is high-pitched and whining about how bad things are? Why doesn't he make a suggestion about how to fix it, like I do on a daily basis, like I do in all of my books, like I do in all of my tweets? When the, when the right wing, if it is a right wing, and I don't believe it for one minute, starts whining and complaining, they lost already. They're like kids in a playground who had a ball taken away from their sitting and whining. He took the ball away from me. Well, go grab the ball back from the left instead of whining about it every day. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. Now, I want to play a soundbite for you. There's uh, another community that I haven't mentioned yet, the jackass community. And I would say the head of the jackass community, well, there's a lot of heads of the jackass community. Uh, one you probably know, Occasional Cortex, she maybe is today the head of the jackass community. Sheila Jackson Lee, jackass community. Uh, Nadler, jackass community. Well, here's one that you cannot believe. Here's Dem Representative Frederica Wilson in Florida say, saying making fun of members of Congress should be prosecuted. I, I'm not making this up. Here is a sitting member of Congress saying anyone who ridicules any member of Congress should be prosecuted. And she calls herself a liberal Democrat. Listen to the head of the jackass party, Frederica Wilson. Those people who are online making fun of members of Congress are a disgrace. And there's no need for anyone to think that is unacceptable. We're going to shut them down and work with whoever it is to shut them down and they should be prosecuted. You cannot intimidate members of Congress, threaten members of Congress. It is against the law and it's a shame in this United States of America. So that's the head of the jackass community in the United States Congress. And she's not alone, though. Nadler would be a member. I can name five of them right off the top of my head. But Frederica Wilson today wins the prize for being the head of the jackass community in the United States Congress. I'll be right back. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. People see your jawline, and it simply tells your age. Now, here's Robin from Lubbock, Texas. She said, I put Genucel jawline cream on my neck two or three days ago. She says, this is the best my neck has looked in 20 years. People told me my face looked young. I'm blown away. Using MDL technology in Chamonix's proprietary base, Genucel's brand-new jawline treatment specifically targets the delicate skin around the neck and jaw for tight, healthy, younger-looking skin. See results right before your eyes or 100% of your money back. No questions asked. Call now and the classic genius cell for bags and puffiness is free with your order. And to start seeing results in 12 hours or less, genius cell immediate effects is also yours free. No double chin, no turkey neck, and no sagging jawline because no one needs to know your age. 800-SKIN-891 or GenuCell.com. Get your two free gifts and free express shipping. Call 800-SKIN-891 or go to GenuCell.com. That's GenuCell.com. You're listening to Michael Savage and the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. I feel completely grateful and, and uh, blessed to have the support that I had this whole time from the uh, from the country and from um, all the troops. This sm small group of SEALs that decided to uh, concoct this story in no way, shape, or form represent the, com the community that I've you know loved and uh, gave my soul to. So this has put a uh, a black eye on the uh, this community. That's Eddie Gallagher, Free Eddie. We've been after freeing Eddie for a very long time. The Navy SEAL acquitted of the ISIS murder, says the media tried to frame him. And I want to thank the members of the Savage Nation. If you emailed or you wrote your congressperson or your senator or even the president way back when, when everyone was trying to condemn him or was afraid to say the right thing here, uh, we did it. We were, we were amongst the first, if not the first. And Navy SEALs Fund acknowledges the following, she said, being on the Savage Nation helped start the momentum for Eddie's case, especially getting his wife, Andrea's voice heard. Again, I don't need the credit. I don't need a pat on the head from Donald Trump. What I need is to know that I helped somebody who was innocent. This guy is the backbone of America. This, this guy represents what the cops represent to me, the street cops, what the average soldier represents to me what the average Air Force pilot represents to me, what the average naval officer represents to me. This is 
this guy, Eddie Gallagher, was the sum, the sin qua known of all of them. He represented all of them to me. And if we don't stand up for these guys when they're unfairly accused like this, and we let the shrikes like half cortex slander her way to the top, we're going to lose this country as sure as I'm sitting here. And there's no reason we, the majority of this country, should let these shrikes and these communists take over this country. It is a battle, make no mistake about it. You're in a war. Whether you know it or not, whether you sit silently or not, whether you think that by listening to a show such as mine or others, you're contributing to the cause, you may be in a certain, in a certain way, but you're not really. You're passive. I'm afraid that they're very active and they're activated and they're winning right now. They're winning the culture wars. When you see an unknown moron like uh, this hideous shrike, I call her, half cortex, slandering her way all to the top, she calls it a concentration camp. When a real Jewish survivor in his 90s who lost his whole family to the Nazis says she should be thrown out of Congress and nobody in the media, including the Jews, take his side, you understand what side the media is on. You understand that? But we, the people, are the majority. And the majority of the majority are extremely patriotic. The majority of the majority love the military and the police. The majority of the majority hate flag burners and would like to see them arrested. The majority of the majority was on Eddie Gallagher's side, not on the side of the ISIS teen. I love when they throw the word teen. You hear a 17-year-old teen. Have you seen the teens in the streets of America? They're innocent little children, aren't they? The teens, two of them shot another two yesterday here in the Bay Area. Teens. What does the word teen mean? Tell me what it means. You put a gun in the hands of a teen. What is he, a teen? He's a killer. What do you mean, teen? Teen. All of a sudden, the word teens it gives you immunity from prosecution. Not in my book. ISIS teen stabbed in the neck by a Navy SEAL. First of all, I wasn't there and you weren't there. I love all of the quarterbacking after the fact by people who were not there. All I know is this. If we had had the rules of engagement that we have today, going into World War II, you would be speaking, you would be speaking German or you'd be a lampshade. That's a savage quote. Write it down. If you left-wing garbage, you left-wing fanatics, if you left-wing communist scum had been in charge of this country as you seem to be in charge of the culture wars right now, if you've been running the media in 1939, we'd be speaking German and most of you would be lampshades. And so I say we are at war and we're losing the culture war. We are losing the culture war. We can't just whine about them. We've got to fight back. And fight back is what gets me up in the morning. So when I saw yesterday that Eddie Gallagher was found not guilty, I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about that today. It's a big deal. Then I wake up and nothing's happened to occasional cortex for comparing the superb, wonderful care that the illegal alien kids are getting on the border to those who died in the concentration camp after being worked to death and tortured to death. What are they fleeing in Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador? They're fleeing better conditions than they have there on the border? Do you think most of these people had running water? Do you think that they had an indoor toilet? If you think so, you're wrong. They didn't have running water in a toilet. Do you think that they had nice sheets, air conditioning, television? If that's your idea of a concentration camp, you're sicker than Jerry Nadler. You're sicker than occasional cortex. You are sicker than the worst of the Antifa people if you believe those are concentration camps. That's all I can say to you. Now, if you think fighting back isn't working, you're mistaken. Because of voices like mine and voices like yours, the police in Portland have been activated now, and they're looking for other members of the Antifa violence brigades. Why? Because the mayor has to be investigated by the FBI. Ted Wheeler needs to be dragged over the coals by the FBI for aiding and abetting Antifa. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Michael Savage, weekdays from noon to 3 on Talk Radio 560, KSFO. You know, when President Trump says America will never be a socialist country, believe me, couldn't be more right. That's why it's so troubling that a proposal from the Department of Health and Human Services would actually move us towards socialism. The International Drug Pricing Index would actually adopt socialist price controls set by foreign nations. 
Today, Americans get access to cutting-edge therapies for diseases like cancer nearly two years before any other country. And the future holds incredible promise for fighting diseases like Alzheimer's and MS. But the HHS proposal would cripple America's world-leading medical innovation. We would have fewer new cures, and they'd be harder to obtain. We should control costs with market-based reforms by fostering competition and by making countries pay their fair share, not with socialist price controls. Please keep America great by keeping American medical innovation great. Visit protectmypartb.org. Protectmypartb.org. Paid for by Americans for tax reform. Visit protectmypartb.org. We are the men of Mexico. We wear it the is the uh, 3 July 4th program on the we Savage like Nation. I'm Michael Savage, a proud member of the Patriot uh, community. There's so many communities in the country. Uh, since I'm a community organizer of the Patriot community, I'm very proud to uh, to be here for you today. I want to read to you something because I grew up with poor people. I didn't know about rich. I lived uh, with immigrants. Most of them were very poor, and some of them worked their way up out of poverty. Some didn't. So when I hear them complaining about their lifestyle down at the border, I really got to laugh and I get angry. Let me tell you about gold sand. Gold Sand was my favorite adopted grandfather. And what happened to him is he got mustard gassed in France in World War I. And he lived in a room for $12 a month. He's probably dead by now until they jacked up his rent to 35 a month. I'm probably talking about in the 60s. That almost killed him. So you see, this poor guy lived in this room without heat and they slept wrapped in a newspaper. That's how poor people lived in America in the 1950s even. You hear this? This jackass there, Cortex, goes down there. To, they don't have 600 thread sheets. They're not getting a hair shampoo every day with a hairdresser. So they're being kept in a concentration camp. So he lives in this room without heat, wrapped in a newspaper. He wrapped his feet in a newspaper, slept under a dozen bank blankets. But then he saved every dime he had and he bought, rare, uh, bought a house. What did he buy? A little tiny cheap house up in the Catskill Mountains. And I remember when I was a young man and I was first dating some people I could travel with, some girls. I'd go up to the Catskill Mountains in the early spring, right after winter, when nobody was there. It was cold as hell. And he'd give me the key for me to go open up this little paradise that he bought for himself, this house up in the mountains, this poor man. And, you know, then I knew that I was a man. And I'd come back to the city, and Goldstein would look at me and say, with a smile, a sweet smile on his old face, he'd say, so how was the country? And he'd look at me with that beautiful face, he'd look up and ask, how was the country? He always wanted to know how the country was. And although Goldstein was 72 years old at the time, he was not worried. He had 46 more years to live. How did he know he had 46 more years to live? You see, four years before, some very alarming symptoms overtook him. Goldstein began to sweat heavily. He had difficulty breathing. He ran a fever, the works. Sure that the end was coming, Goldstein visited with Shapiro, the king of old men, on New York's Lower East Side. Shapiro, who was then 98 years old, asked his ailing friend, What's the matter? You afraid you're going to die? Yes, offered the ailing Goldstein. How many more years you want? 50? So you got him. 50 more years to live. That was four years earlier. So now Goldstein had at least another 46 years to go. Oh, by the way, what was the illness? Well, that was cured with a piece of crusty Italian bread. <laughs> I got to tell you the rest of the story. He thought he was dying because he had it like a lump in his throat. So the old man says, okay, you got 46 more years to go. Leave me alone. So then he got cured. How? While enjoying what he thought was one of his last meals, he indulged himself in a piece of this crusty loaf, quite different from the usual rye and pumpernickel that he usually ate. So he ate this crusty Italian bread. And as he swallowed, he felt something tear off in his throat and a slimy fluid oozing out. And that was it. From then on, he breathed easier. His countenance was restored. No fever, nothing. Rudetsky, the doctor to these men, later speculated that a small bone had become large in the old man's throat. A cyst enveloped his bone and began to grow around it. And this is what the high fever was about. White corpuscles fighting off the invading growth. That's all in a savage life. That's the story of a piece of the story of my childhood. I thought you'd enjoy it. I know many of you are enjoying this book for the holidays, probably taking it with you on vacation. And that's a true story. Love that old guy. Love going up to them. Where are you guys going for the holiday? 
Anybody going to do anything interesting this July 4th? Is there a flyover I'm missing in the San Francisco area? I'm not going to go to Washington, D.C. to see the flyover or the flies on the wall. I, I'm glad Trump has tanks, planes, and trains, and airplanes. I think that's going to be great to watch on TV. I love it. I personally love military equipment, so if I get a chance to see my military flying over or crumbling, you know, rolling down the street, I love that. Why are you opposed to that? Why are liberals terrified of seeing a tank roll down the street? That just shows our military prowess. What are you so ashamed of? You could have an LGBTQ float, you mean waving rainbow flags? And that's your idea of a projecting power to the world? Okay, different strokes for different folks, as you say. So let us old Americans and young Americans alike who are patriots, let us have our day. Because I don't give a damn what you think anyway. Because our president is ours now, not yours. Remember that. He's running the country, not that shrieker from the Bronx. He's running the country, not the ticket fixer from Brooklyn. He's running the country, not the psychopath from Southern California or Northern California or points in between. And he wants airplanes in the sky flying over the White House. Good for him. He wants tanks going down Pennsylvania Avenue. So do I. The more the merrier. Let the world see America is back. Let the world see we're not ashamed of ourselves, that we're proud to be Americans, and we're proud of our military, and we're proud of our military force. And if you don't like it, do what you want. But he's our president now, not yours. And if you don't like it, go somewhere else. That's what I think. And I'm looking forward to it myself. I'm not going anywhere. Anybody live in the San Francisco area can tell me what's exciting on July 4th. I know of a few parades here and there. Uh, in advance of the July 4th holiday, I boiled four hot dogs before the show. Don't worry about it. They're all beef, no nitrites, no sulfites. They were delicious. Dipped them in poupon mustard, countered it with some uh, roughage of some kind, chopped onions. So I'm all set for July 4th. I just celebrated it. Put a flag outside my house. How come I don't see any flags outside American houses here in the Marin County? Why are these left-wingers so ashamed to be in this country when they've done so well? You know, last night I was in a place. I went for a pizza and, a, and something to relax after five. I had to move only three times from, from the conversations I couldn't stand listening to. It's not that I'm not tolerant. Why did they have to talk so loud? Well, the final move came when I sat myself outside in an atrium, and adjacent to me was an older woman and her mature son, probably. He was in his 50s. She was in her 70s. They were fairly well-dressed for their pizza pie and their happy hour uh, saving on the thing. Well, I paid as little attention to them as I could, but they saw they had a live customer on the opposite side of the atrium, so they raised their voice. See what I mean? Once they see a customer sitting there that they can bother, there go the voices. So the adult son starts in with mentioning a magazine called Slate. I said, oh, God, here it comes. And he tells his mother, well, do you know what Slate is? And she said, no, never heard of it. He says, well, it's a left-of-center publication that's rather erudite. And she says, oh, well, that's, that's along my lines of thinking. I said, okay, I'm gone. I'm out of here. That's it. So that was, that, that was move number three out of the atrium. And I finished my half pizza and uh, my calamari on the side with a glass of water, and I felt great. I was feeling no pain. But that's what I got to put up with here in these liberal areas. You cannot believe how anti-American how communistic they are, and how they, they're they proud of it. First of all, Slate, by the way, is out of business the last I checked. And it was not erudite. It was sophomoric, incidentally. The right word is sophomoric, not erudite. But nevertheless, Slate isn't the issue. The issue is the activation of the left wing in this country and the silence of the right wing. And I'm going to give you a little hint for July 4th. You don't have to yell. You don't have to scream. You don't have to challenge anyone. Can't you just speak out proudly about this country, wherever you are? If you're out to dinner with your wife, why can't you celebrate by talking about how proud you are of America? Why can't you say, I'm so happy that Eddie Gallagher, the Navy SEAL, was found not, not, not guilty? Why can't you say that? What are you afraid of? <clears throat> you're afraid the illegal alien waiter is going to be mad at you? You can take your country back one place at a time. A supermarket checkout stand, a restaurant, a Cub Scout meeting, a parents' teachers' meeting. But you have to have the guts to be looked at oddly by those people who disagree with you or don't understand how far they have fallen as Americans. That's all I want to say about it. I knew a woman who owned a huge vitamin company. They built it from nothing, her and her husband. 
they were average poor people struggling. Then they hit it big with a vitamin supplement. They became multi, multi, multi millionaires in a short period of time. They could hardly keep up with the cash flow. I remember that woman. I admire her enormously. She said that wherever I go, even if it's a supermarket, and this was a rich woman at that time, I always talk about my vitamin line at the checkout stand. I say to the clerk something about my, my vitamin line. I, I never forgot that. Because you build a company, you build a movement, one person at a time. That's what you could do as an American. You can do it tonight in a restaurant. You could do it quietly. You don't have to challenge anyone. You don't have to be cocky about it. Just by being proud as an American. You don't even have to tie it to Trump if you don't want to, if you don't want to go that far. Just be proud to be an American. Just be thankful that this country can still take in millions upon millions of uh, immigrants and uh, give them so much that they didn't have in their, in their third world hell holes. And just be thankful that the vermin on the left can still get away with putting down and slandering this nation without being thrown in prison for sedition. And I want to go back to what I began my show with, in case you missed it, malevolent drones. Malevolent drones. And I don't mean the kind you fly. I am talking about those who have been infiltrated into our government, into our military, into our academic establishments. They are malevolent, and they're drones that are waiting to be activated, as you saw them activated in the, in the uh, Navy SEAL case. Like scorpions, they strike when they see a weakness or an opening. And what they use is uh, slander, lies, and deceit uh, to get ahead. And when they can, they attack. They often look like you, sound like you, talk like you, walk like you, but make no mistake about it, they are not you. Even if you are a neutral person who doesn't want to be dragged into politics, you should understand that the nation's future hangs in the balance like a loose tooth. I'm Michael Savage. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, I see that the world's safest asset class, gold, is nearing 2019 highs. You heard me right. Why do you think that is so? Could it have something to do with the erosion of trust in so many areas of our culture? Today, only one person out of 10 still has confidence in the government. This growing distrust also includes the financial markets, and by the way, the monetary system. No wonder gold, the universal reserve asset, is becoming so attractive to everyone. From central banks to private individuals in every country and every class, from billionaires to blue-collar workers, gold, gold, gold. Discover the many advantages of owning some gold today, from asset privacy to retirement protection, even to profit potential, by calling the most trusted name in gold, the only gold company I recommend, Swiss America. Do it now, please. 800-289-2646. 800-289-2646. Read the timeless truth about gold. It's free. Just call 800-289-2646. 800-289-2646. Take it from Savage. In gold, you can trust. You're listening to Michael Savage. Coming up at 3, it's Mark Levin on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. I got to tell you this. When President Trump says America will never be a socialist country, he really couldn't be more right. And, and that's why it's so troubling to me that a proposal from the... Uh, DHS would move us in that direction. The International Drug Pricing Index would adopt socialist price controls that would be set by foreign countries. Now, today, Americans get access to cutting-edge therapies for diseases like cancer nearly two years before other countries. And the future holds incredible promise for fighting diseases like Alzheimer's and MS. But the new HHS proposal would cripple America's world-leading medical innovation. We would have fewer new cures, and they'd be harder to obtain. We should control costs, for sure, with market-based reforms by fostering competition and by making other countries pay their fair share, not with socialist price controls. So please keep America great by keeping American medical innovation great. Visit protectmypartb.org, 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 paid for by Americans for tax reform. Let's have some music, Robert, because our number one is coming to an end. I can't believe it. God. You know, my shows fly by. Of course, there's an hour or two, but right now, you know, everything is thrown at you in hour one. 
And I realize today how we've gone when you listen to Cortex, occasional Cortex or these other, these leftists, that we've gone from freedom of speech to, well, something else which I call freedom of screech. Yeah, you heard it first. From freedom of speech to freedom of screech in one generation. Let's have some music, Robert, if you can hit the right. Hey, da, dee, ding, dong, da, ling, 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 da, Scratch it, break it. You can't sell a song like that today. Half of the songs that were beautiful love songs with the degenerates who run the music business today, the drug addicts, the degenerates, you can't get that produced, right? Read my lips, no new records. So let's see what's in the news out there that I haven't touched on yet that you really need to know about, like nothing. We can, we can invent news if you want. See, what was this obsession with breaking news? Fox started that with the flashing and the signs, and every minute you got to tune in, right? Nothing's going on. There's no news, no terrorism, no acts of violence. No one got run over that I know. There's, any, there's no uh, insurrection. There's no revolution. There's no war. Things are good under Donald Trump. Things have never been better, actually. Everyone's doing better than ever. They can buy two pair of jeans. They can buy three dinners. There's six hits on a bong pipe. Everyone's got more money than they know what to do with. Stocks are roaring to record highs. And we're supposed to worry about the trade deficit. How can I worry about the trade deficit when I don't trade anything that could produce a deficit? So we don't worry about the trade deficit anymore. Now, of course, it was a Democrat president. You'd hear uh, the uh, radio cartel screaming bloody murder about the trade deficit, but we've got to ignore it right now. Tanks, military vehicles are taking over the streets of Washington, D.C. as I speak for tomorrow's celebration. That's good. That's a good thing. According to the latest poll, Biden and Harris are now tied. Eh, I don't know. She didn't do very much. She's just a screecher. She's not going anywhere. Trump could, could turn her into pulp. With one uh, one uh, one interchange between her and her and, uh, and, and I'll tell you, Biden produces a threat because he represents old uh, America. He represents quietude. Let's turn the clock back. But uh, Harris is no threat to Trump for three, four, five different reasons, and the main one is is no one's ever seen the skeletons in her closet yet. But I can guarantee you, as I sit here, the Republicans have X-rays of those skeletons which will be released if she ever becomes a real threat. The phone number here is un, uh, important because we're almost out of time. Let's all celebrate Eddie Gallagher's release from prosecution and never forget what I taught you today about the malevolent drones within. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7288. Savage. And that concludes the live hour of the radio program. Next. The Hour 2 Rehash, or Best of Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, author of A Savage Life, Michael Savage. The violent leftists attacking conservatives, the left-wing mayor of Portland, Oregon, is now under fire for tying the hands of police and letting violent leftists attack conservatives. We need the FBI to go to Portland, Oregon, and investigate the background of the mayor of Portland, Oregon. Because it's, it, to me, it seems that Portland and the state of Oregon have been hijacked by the communist left. Not only the violence against conservatives, where the police are being told to stand down, but the illegitimate state officers are going to grant driver's licenses to illegal aliens in Oregon... And they will not let citizens vote upon this by re by referendum. They have hijacked and stolen the vote in Oregon. It's time for the FBI to take over Portland and the state capital itself. 
And there's another topic I want to talk about. Here's my headline. Is this the new dark age? Anti-Semitism of the left? Dark days for Jews in literature? You've got to read this story. You will not believe this is going on in this country. It happened in England, but it's also happening secretly here, which is that a new anti-Semitism has kicked up, and two cultural organizations in England have just rejected hosting talks by a Jewish novelist, Richard Zimler. In fact, they asked him if he was Jewish, and the minute he said that he was through his agent, they lost all interest in him. Can you believe what's going on in this country and in England? Can you believe that the Muslims have made such an inro inroads into our nations, into the West itself, to destroy Jewish people wherever they turn simply for supporting Israel? That is what is going on, and it's gotten even worse. Did you know that American publishers have hired sensitivity readers not to offend minorities? That's right. Sensitivity readers, remember where you heard it first. Sensitivity readers are being hired by publishers to make sure manuscripts do not offend minorities. And a publisher has backed out of a novel about an imagined Iranian attack on Israel written by a man named Hesh Keston, who wrote the book as a novelist. And uh, Stephen King wrote a glowing blurb. But because, because it said negative things about Muslims in the book, the book was canceled by the publisher. And here is a man who wrote the book who uh, said that he... Uh, worked in the Israeli military and reported to Arab officers. He worked in the Israeli military and he had a Druze officer as his commanding officer. He also said that he cannot believe that the left wing in this country and in England has gotten so bad that they are now banning books that say anything that is not positive about Muslims. Remember where you heard it first on the Savage Nation. The mayor did nothing, the police did nothing, as a conservative writer, a Korean-American who was gay, by the way, was ripped to shreds, beaten up in the streets by the vermin in masks who call themselves Antifa. They punched him, they, they threw things at him, they threw uh, milkshakes at him with, with uh, what do you call it, concrete in it. The police stand, stood down because the mayor is a psychopathic left-winger, and they did nothing, and the police are, have been hamstrung in Portland. Now, I want to talk about that for a few minutes because I am a student of history, and I'm reading... A, a biography right now about Ernst Rum. Strangely enough, Ernst Rum was the very rugged looking Nazi who led the SA, the Brown Shirts. He was a very interesting character for a number of reasons. Number one, he was a homosexual, which you would think would have been an automatic death sentence in Nazi Germany, but it was not. Ernst Rom was a very active macho homosexual and surrounded himself with other macho men who were also gay. And they led the fascist brown shirts in the streets of Germany. Now, what does it have to do with the Antifa vermin in the streets of Portland and everywhere else? Let me tell you something. Those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. So kindly do not misinterpret what I'm about to tell you. Let me explain what was going on in Germany before the brown shirts arose, just so you get it straight in your head. It's identical to what's happening right now in America in the streets. You see, the Weimar Republic that existed in Germany at that time was extremely liberal. The cities were polluted with pornography. The country was degenerating. The average German was pissed off at the moral downturn of Germany. And the communists were in the streets of Germany rioting. They were intimidating people, beating them up. They did anything they wanted, and no one could control the communists. And then along came the brown shirts, who were a reaction to the Antifa of Nazi Germany, pre-Nazi Germany. Do you under follow me so far? The brown shirts were created as a counterforce to the out-of-control communist street gangs in Germany. The rest is history. I've been warning you for at least 10 years that unless the left wing is constrained by the government, and I mean quickly, we're going to have a right wing emerge in this country that you've never seen before. If you think it doesn't exist, I think you're mistaken. I think that all the seeds of a fascism are here, and it's only going to take a leader to agitate them. If we should get more of this Antifa behavior because the government is too cowardly to control them,
And believe me, the DHS should have stopped Antifa a long time ago. The Antifa groups are usually easily defined and found. DHS probably knows who they are behind their black masks, which universities they teach at, for example, and they do nothing about them. So now they beat up a guy, a Korean-American, who simply at a protest, and nothing happens to anybody because the police were told to stand down by the left-wing fanatic who runs Portland. Let's hear from the American-Korean journalist who was beaten by Antifa in Portland while police stood there doing nothing. Listen to clip six. I just got beat up by the crowd, no police at all, um, in the middle of the street, and they stole my GoPro, and they punched me several times in my face, and my head, I'm bleeding. Um, where the hell were all of you? Can, can you talk to me? Yeah, where the hell were you? Do you know your name? My name's Andy Ngo. You know where you're at? I had been assaulted twice earlier today and reported it to hey. your colleagues. Hey, we and nothing was done. Andy, I'd, I'd like and to. And I was in the middle of the street in the front documenting this. I'd like to help you. Can, can you tell me? Can you tell they me stole my are? evidence. They told, stole my GoPro. Andy Go is a conservative journalist who's also gay, and he's a Korean. He was beaten by the cowards in black suits and black masks, most of whom probably work at Portland State University or God knows where they go back after they do these things. The cops stood by and did nothing, absolutely nothing. So there's a revolution brewing in the United States of America, and it's a one-way revolution right now where the left-wing fascists are in control of this country on the streets. And they do so, they justify this under the guise that Trump is a fascist. Let me remind you of something. If Trump were what they say he is, they would be in prison, all of them. Do you understand what I just said? If Trump was what they're lying in saying he is, they wouldn't be in the streets speaking. They would be arrested. But you see how it works, how propaganda, how powerful it is when you have Jeff Zucker in your pocket? You can twist reality itself by changing the language and justify almost anything that you do. We go back to the white man, Joe Biden, as white as the snow, again, putting down white people. And then he goes on again, and here he is attacking whites again, like a big schmuck, the big moron he always was. The man has always been an idiot, always looked like an idiot, always talked like an idiot. So now what's happening? What's he doing now? He's attacking whites because the pharmacologically deranged millennials are attacking whites. So he joins the fray in clip 06. Listen. The bottom line is we have a lot to root out, but most of all, there's systematic racism that most of us whites don't like to acknowledge even exists. Us don't whites, are you listening to this? Acknowledge it. Are you listening to this? It's been built this? into every aspect of our system. Because you when your schools are substandard, when your houses oh, shut up. are undervalued, are you when listening your car to this? insurance costs more for no apparent reason, when poverty rates for this black Americans lie? is still twice that of white Americans. Stop right there. Do you realize what a big lie this is? Do you know that since Title VII passed of the Civil Rights Act, this is all illegal and it doesn't happen? Because if it did happen, people who were doing it would go to jail. Are you aware of that? Do you realize these bastards are trying to relive and reignite the 1960s all over again? And then this time, start a race war on top of it all. I've heard all of this garbage before. I've been through it before. I listened to it before. I heard the A-Trap Browns before. I lived through the Black Panthers before. But did I ever think I would wake up and hear a white man like this, an old hack like this, repeating the rhetoric of A-Trap Brown, as suddenly he's put on a mantle of a, a man of color? Why are they doing this? Where is this coming from, all of this hatred? How did they get away with it without people shouting them off the stage? Huh? How? Tell me how. Here is again the most dangerous man in American political history because he's very smart. He's very smart, Bernie Sanders. Here is the most racist man in political history calling Donald Trump a racist. Listen to 09. Today we talk about justice and today we talk about racism. And I must tell you, it gives me no pleasure to tell you that it. we now have a president of the United States who is a racist oh, and we have man. a president intentionally you purposely is trying to divide us up the by the color of our skin the by our gender gender by the country we, country came, we from, came from by, by our, our religion. religion you lying piece of if I could I would like to slap you in the face 
You know, I'll tell it again, Bernie. I think you're of Jewish descent, aren't you? Ooh! Ooh! What does that have to do with anything? Ooh! What do I mean by that, Bernie? You know, Bernie, in December, I had the honor of being invited to the White House for a Hanukkah party, which you may not know is a Jewish celebration. I realize a guy like you, Bernie, doesn't even know what Hanukkah is. Uh, you suddenly rediscovered your Judaism when you went on the national stage. Uh, after saying you had no religion, suddenly you say you're very Jewish. I get it. But Hanukkah is a Jewish celebration, Bernie. That very day that I went to the Hanukkah celebration in the White House, I went to the Holocaust Museum, and I saw pictures that so upset me of innocent people being herded into the into the concentration camps. I had to go back to the hotel room for a couple hours and shut the curtains and lie there in bed and wonder how man's inhumanity to man could reach such a fever pitch. And then I went to a Hanukkah party, Bernie, in the White House. And what I saw were happy Jews, rich Jews, poor Jews, religious Jews, non-religious Jews, billionaires, people who didn't have a penny, enjoying themselves in this so-called racist White House. And I wrote in my journal, Bernie, you rat you, you bum you, you mook you, you piece of garbage you, you street vermin you. Here's what I saw, Bernie Sanders. I said to myself, the Jewish people and other minorities have never had it so good as they do in the United States of America today under Donald Trump. The African-American unemployment rate, the lowest in almost 50 years. The Hispanic unemployment rate, the lowest in almost 50 years. There is no racism coming out of this White House, you rat liar, you. You damn race baiter, you. You hater, you bad man, you. You're all around bad man. Your DNA is so polluted, Bernie, that all you can do is poison the earth with it. And very few people will stand up to him. They're all afraid to say one word to him. But I'm not. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now, more of the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Now, the media is the problem in America, as you well know. The media is egging on the worst element and the worst instincts of human beings. Those nice men, you know, in the nice suits and the nice ties who make 5 to $12 million a year. You know, those nice girls in those nice skirts who look like the girl next door, but they're not. They are the ones who glorify the worst and lowest common denominator of our society. If they are the lowest they are raised to the highest. If they are the most violent, they are posed as saviors of America by the vermin in the media, whether it be Don Lemon, Chris Cuomo, you name it. But the worst of all of them is the man who runs CNN. And I don't know that you don't understand, how people don't understand that there's a limit to freedom of speech. If a man who runs a network specializes in fomenting hatred and violence as this character does who runs CNN. I want to know why the government shouldn't step in and arrest him. I know those are powerful words. I know you're saying you're calling for censorship. Well, there was censorship in America for a long period of time, and it kept violence and filth out of the movie theaters, and it was a better America when you didn't see violence and filth in the movie theaters. Because an FBI director named J. Edgar Hoover prohibited Hollywood from glorifying the lowest scum of the earth. Now you have Jeff Zucker glorifying the lowest scum of the earth on a daily basis. And we don't need censorship? Well, think about what it means. What's a government's job? A government's job is to protect the people. Is that right? Even protecting the people from themselves. A government should stop pornography. A government should stop the broadcast of violence and a broadcast of absolute lies. That's what a government should do. But then again, I'm only a talk show host. I have no authority and no power. I only have my opinions and my God-given ability to express them. So let me play for you now a little montage of the media's history of supporting the violent street vermin called Antifa in clip five. I argue to you tonight, all punches are not equal morally. In the eyes of the law, yes. 
But in the eyes of good and evil, here's the argument. They are strictly principled anti-fascists. And what they see in the Trump administration and what they see happening in this country, they see, they see the neo-fascism that we see. And they've taken a principled stand to stand against white supremacists and white nationalists wherever they may show up. It says it right in the name, Antifa, anti-fascism, which is what they were there you stupid um, moron, fighting. You. Listen, there's you know, no Listen organization me, is perfect. Lemon. There's some violence. I think that a lot of people recognize that when pushed, self-defense is a legitimate legitimate response to white supremacy and neo-Nazi violence. The problem people? is to equate the violence in reaction against bigotry with the bigotry itself is to misunderstand the fact that when you go to cancer go treatment, to hell, you the Nazi radiation you. is Shut up. treatment. So these are the new Nazis of our time. They're wearing nice suits and ties, they're wearing clean dresses, and inside they're as rotten as Dracula's grandmother. They're promoting the violence that you're seeing in the streets of America by supporting the most violent street thugs America has seen in its entire history since the Ku Klux Klan, and that is Antifa. Antifa is the Ku Klux Klan of today. Do you know that? Catch up with the times. Did you hear what I just said? Antifa is the nascent Ku Klux Klan of today. Savage. Now back to Michael Savage on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. This was them on their best behavior, and they put them in a room with no running water, and these women were being told by CBP officers to drink out of the toilet. They were drinking water out of the toilet, and that was them knowing what a congressional visit was coming. That was This is CBP on their best behavior, telling people to drink out of the toilet. Obviously, what we saw today was disgusting. Uh, when we were at the border just a couple of months ago, we saw... Also, although they, would, they didn't let us t talk to any of the kids, mm. but to any people, we saw very disgusting uh, conditions then. This ambulance is inhuman. Chaser. Shut this up, is Ambulance Chaser. Get out. Get off my show. Ambulance Chaser. Nadler. A ticket fixer from Brooklyn. A bum. A mook. A bum. A mutt. And then look at that other one. A 4,000 vote. Already she's running the world. Drinking out of toilet bowls. Where they come from, they drink out of mud pies. They eat mud and drink out of toilet bowls. They come here for the freebies. She makes up this big lie. I have a question for you. Hispanic pastors toured the border facility after this loudmouth liar, occasional cortex, made up the story. And they lambasted her. And they said they're shocked by the misinformation of this lying communist slime ball funded by George Soros. And so I ask you, why is she not censored? in Congress. Why are the Republicans not raising the issue of this lying girl who is making the whole... You realize what she's doing? Do you understand the damage being done to America's reputation at home and abroad? Do you realize how this empowers Hispanic gangs to attack white people? Do you understand this is fomenting a civil war in this country? When you have a phony like this, then you have that other phony Nadler. Do you understand this? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Now, domestically, we now have this loudmouth liar, occasional cortex, going down to the border, agitating the world, defaming our border patrol, defaming our country, and nothing happens to her. So I said, well, why doesn't Congress act to censure her and dismiss her? She claimed that there were concentration camps. A 95-year-old Jewish man who survived an actual concentration camp was so outraged because he lost his whole family to the Nazis. He demanded that she be dismissed from Congress, that she at least visit the Holocaust Museum. Instead, the loudmouth liar goes to the border to, again, agitate and stir up hatred against this country. There are motions that could be taken in Congress, but here's the rub. The reason the Republicans don't do it is they don't control Congress. It's controlled by scum like Nadler. It's, it's controlled by filth like Pelosi. It's controlled by paid, professional, left-wing liars who never have told the truth in their whole lives. So they have no chance to censure occasional cortex. It would be a mission impossible and futile because the uh, Republicans lost control of the House, as you know, last November. For whatever the reasons are, we don't have to go into that one. That's another topic that is troubling me, that a person like this, who won by only 4,000 votes, who prior to this being Congresswoman, was nothing but a bartender, and I have nothing against bartenders. I know some really nice ones. 
who have intelligence and integrity. This is the kind that swipes tips from the other bartenders. This is the type that puts water in uh, your drink. This is the type that spits in the drink of someone she doesn't like. This is the lowest form of humanity, and she's untouchable, apparently, because she's a minority and a woman. Well, you know what? Not in my book. Not in my book, man. This is a bad, bad actor, a really bad one, funded by George Soros. When you read that ProPublica is behind her on the border, it's George Soros again. Cortex stokes hatred at Border Patrol. Should she be censored? Well, no, I'd go further. I'd create a new UAC, and I'd like to run it. I'll volunteer for a dollar a year. I want to run the new UAC, House of Un-American Activities Committee. I'd like to chair the committee as an ad hoc committee, because I'm not a member of Congress. And I'd like to chair this committee, and I would drag Cortex in front of this committee. And if she doesn't come, try her in absentia. Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up, and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. And like this is our World War II, mm -hmm. and. I think for younger people, we're looking at this and we're like, how how are we saying let's take it easy when 3,000 Americans died last year? Thank God for the wisdom of America's elders. That would be the founding fathers who in their great wisdom prohibited anyone under the age of 35 from running for the presidency. We can see why now when we have a mentally deranged, mentally deranged fool getting so much attention based on one lie after another lies stacked upon lies i don't know whether it's a pharmacological issue a genetic issue bad parenting bad schooling whatever it is thank god for the wisdom of america's elders the founding fathers who prohibited anyone under the age of 35 from running for the presidency now, when that age was put in place, 35, as the minimum needed to run for the presidency, the average lifespan of a human being was about 50. So they wanted somebody who was mature, someone who had a family, someone who had a business, someone who provided income, someone who paid taxes, whatever, to run for the presidency. They didn't want a girl just out of the cradle running for the presidency. They were smart. I think that the age... The minimum age to run for the presidency ought to be raised now to 50. Moreover, I think you should need to have a family and need to pay taxes for at least 10 years to run for the presidency. Otherwise, more of this brainwashed, mentally ill group will spout off this insanity, which will give rise to a revolution that will affect all of us. Now, you ask yourself, why would a dummy like this get so much attention from the dummies in the media? And you have your answer because the dummies in the media don't know any better. The dummies in the media are making this moron into a star when in any case, in any country, at any time, you have hundreds of people like this in a room, maybe thousands of people like this in a university, maybe hundreds of thousands of people like this in any country. They're called ignoramuses. To say that global warming or climate change now is their World War II, is an insult to all of the men who lie in graves under crosses in graveyards around the world. Suddenly they're noble and they're fighting the invisible enemy of global warming or climate change. And that's their, their World War II. That's the equivalent of your grandfather landing at Normandy. That's the equivalent of your uncle flying in a B-24 and not coming back to his wife and children. That's the equivalent to men landing on Iwo Jima and getting slaughtered by the Japanese to this this insulting, insulting pharmacological product of America. That's their World War II? That's their World War II? And this is being promoted by the vermin in the media, the brain-dead vermin in the media. Do you realize this country is melting down more rapidly? It's at a higher rate, a faster rate of meltdown than I've ever seen in my life. I've seen, I've seen the socialism. I've seen revolution. I've seen the social discord. I lived through the 60s. I lived through the killings at Kent State. I lived through Martin Luther King Jr. I know the sequence of events and how they go. But I've never seen such an escalation so fast as I am seeing right now. And you have to ask yourself why. Don't overlook this story. I think it's still on michaelsavage.com. A real concentration camp survivor, he's in his 90s, lost his entire family to the Nazis, 
who tra- tortured them and killed them to death. So offended by occasional cortex, the loudmouth chick from Puerto Rico who makes believe she's downtrodden from the Bronx. What an idiot comparing the way the illegal alien children are cared for at the border by us to the way Jews and others were tortured to death and killed in Nazi concentration camps. And instead of saying, I'm sorry, that that big mouth, who has never said she's sorry in her life, doubles down and says they're not really concentration camps that the Germans had. They were death camps, again playing semantics with dead Jews. Well, this guy comes out, and he wants half cortex out of Congress. God works in strange ways. Wouldn't it be great if this elderly man who lost everything in the Holocaust could be the one to bring down this dangerous fascist occasional cortex? Well, I'm a dreamer. I'm a real dreamer. Occasional cortex should be thrown out of Congress for two things. Not just because she has a big mouth and she's a dummy. No, that's everybody in Congress. But because she lied about the Holocaust, comparing it to the treatment at the border, that's number one. It's an insult to every Jew. How any Jew could ever vote for a Democrat again is beyond me. But it's not really beyond me. I know about liberal Jews. I ran from them in New York. I know what their brains are like. They could be geniuses in finance, geniuses in medicine, geniuses in the law, geniuses in business. But when it comes to survival, they're absolute fools. They will always press the D. They will always press the D. So here's Cortex comparing the treatment of these interlopers at the border. No one forced them to come to our country. They broke into our nation. What should we give them? A Four Seasons hotel on the border with 600 thread count sheets and a Mexican translator? What the hell is wrong with this country that we let an idiot like this dictate? Dictate to us, that little loudmouth liar. That got me really angry, uh, drinking from toilets. Moron! Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. You're listening to Michael Savage and the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Thank God for the wisdom of America's elders, the founding fathers. Those are our elders. They were the ones who prohibited anyone under the age of 35 from running for the presidency. And let me repeat this again if you missed it. Let me repeat it again. At that time, people lived to about 50. So they said that if you're under 35, you didn't have the experience or the wisdom to run for the presidency. I would say that since we live much longer today, we need to amend the Constitution. We need to amend it where it says the minimum age to run for the presidency is 50. And I'd add to that, you also need to have been married and have children. How do you like that? And let me add something else, if that doesn't offend enough of you. You'd also have to have paid taxes for at least 10 years. And let me add something else. You also need to have provided a product or a service that some people in America bought in sufficient quantities to have made a profit. Then we'll have a president. But you get a bartender who can't add up her tips without a computer espousing this kind of stuff. We're going to all wind up not only in a mountain of graves, as they saw in Cambodia, but something far worse, because there are millions of people in this country who are filled with hatred because of their loss of their own, at their own behest. They're not losers because of me. They're not a loser because my grandfather and became a, a, a tailor with not a 10 cents in his pocket and worked his heart out with a little tailor shop as an immigrant in America to make suits. Now, I want to raise another issue. There are, there's talk that maybe Trump should dump Pence in 2020 and run with another VP. You know, he could pick someone new. He's running a new. Why doesn't he pick someone new? Say, well, who should it be? Who should Trump pick as a running mate for 2020? I'm going to ask you what you think. Tell me who you think Trump should pick as a running mate. Let's start with it should be a woman. If possible, a minority woman. Anyone but Nikki Haley. Do not pick her. Warmonger maniac. He's going to pick her, warmonger maniac. Uh, no, don't pick Nikki Haley. Not, not a big, I'm not a big fan of Nikki Haley. She did a horrible job at the UN. She, had, she incensed everybody, agitated everybody. She doesn't have a diplomatic bone in her body. And a vice president's job is a diplomatic role. So I'm going to make a suggestion. Of all of the conservative women out there in the media or in politics, 
There's one that I think would make a fabulous choice who would augment Trump's chances of winning in 2020. It would be, she has to be very attractive, very articulate. She should speak foreign languages, especially, including Russian. And so after the roll of the drums, it's none other than, I suggest, Laura Ingram. Now you say, that's an odd choice, isn't it? She won't have you on her show. Doesn't matter to me. She's blocked by people at Fox News. She herself, I consider to be a friend of mine. I haven't seen her in, in months, actually. But I consider Laura Ingram a fine person. And I think Laura Ingram make a, ve a great vice presidential uh, addition to a Donald Trump. That, there it is. You know, she speaks Russian fluently. She came out and visited me a number of years ago. I don't remember, five years ago. And we had Japanese food in a little place I know near my house, one of my houses, rather. And at an adjacent table, there were two burly-looking men speaking fluent Russian. So Laura speaks fluent Russian. I said, what the hell are they saying? Why are they in here? I've never heard a Russian speaker in my entire life in this restaurant. So she overheard them and blah, 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 and we talked to them. No, they were not spies. I don't know who they were. Really, I don't know what they were doing there to this day. But who would you suggest Donald Trump pick if, if he didn't pick Pence? There's nothing wrong with Pence, but Pence is a silent partner. Now, vice presidents generally are supposed to be silent, aren't they? Or are they supposed to be active? Would you suggest that Trump pick an active vice president without, I'm not trying to deride Pence in any way. Who would you suggest as a VP pick for Donald Trump for 2020? Just asking. I saw a story about what's going on at the level of the state in Oregon. You're not going to believe it. Illegal immigrants may soon be legal drivers in Oregon. A measure expanding driving privileges to any Oregon resident, regardless of immigration status, was approved Saturday by the illegitimate state senators. Now, you got to listen to this very carefully. I want you to listen very carefully. When this was made a ballot issue in 2014 to create a driver's card for illegal immigrants, the residents of the state of Oregon soundly defeated the measure. Are you ready for the rest of this story? The new bill, passed by the left-wing fanatics who are running Oregon, cannot be voted upon by residents, as the lawbreakers who are posing as lawmakers added a clause that does not allow for a citizen referendum. My headline is this. Oregon polls hijack the state. They grant driver's licenses to illegal aliens and refuse to let the voters decide. Do you have any idea that the same thing is happening in New York, Illinois, and, and, and California, where the, the citizens have been made null and void by the illegitimates running the states? Do you understand that? And that if we do pass a referendum or a ballot issue, they find a stinking judge who should be in prison, as they did with the judge Felton Henderson, who stole our vote on 209, and they nullify our vote. They are setting the seeds for a revolution in this country, as sure as my name is Michael Savage. We need a country, and a strong country. We need firm borders. We need American Americans speaking English everywhere. And if you don't speak and write English, you don't vote in my country. No English, no vote. Then you'd have America back with one law, one bill. English only on the ballots. I've never heard of anything like this. I told you, my grandfather was an immigrant. My father was an immigrant. I found my grandfather's little card that he walked around with. I keep it. I cherish it. They wrote it out for him, what his name was, where he lived. Guess what? If he didn't speak English, he didn't vote. They didn't have ballots in every language on Earth. They didn't have Lithuanian, Russian. Savage.